my name is Susie and today I thought I would share with you something that I've just recently discovered. This is very new to me within the last couple of weeks and that is neurographic art. I was drawn to it because the artwork was so beautiful but after looking into it a little bit more, I realized that it has therapeutic qualities as well. So not only are you creating a beautiful piece of art, but you can also help yourself with relaxation, de-stressing, etc. Now, all you're going to need to do this is a piece of paper, a permanent marker, and then a coloring medium of your choice. I'm using pastels, but you can use markers, you can use pencil crayons, you can use crayons, you can use anything that you like, and that's basically all you need. Oh, um, you might also need a little bit of tape to hold down your artwork and a couple of coins, which is a great trick on helping you get started with this design. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just going to grab a piece of paper and I've got my workbook and I'm going to be using pastels. So this paper has some um, texture to it in order to hold on to the pastels well. And then I'm just gonna take some tape and I'm gonna create a frame around my piece of paper and it's also going to hold it in place and stop it from moving because we are going to be drawing freehand and we want our drawing to flow and then that's it. So neurographic art really um, comes from neuroplasticity and neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change, modify, and adapt as you age or as you grow through life. Now the neurographic art can just be art on its own, but there is neographic therapy, which offers some therapeutic benefits as well as creating a beautiful work of art. And this um, therapy was developed by psychologist and author Pavel Piskorov. So I am going to just give you the basis of the drawing and how to do it based on just my knowledge. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, I'm just Susie Homemaker and I'm curious about stuff and this is really fun, it's very relaxing and I'm just going to give you the very basics of what my understanding is. So what you want to do with your drawing is you're going to create lines from one side of the page to the other. You're going to allow those lines to flow and you want those lines to go in a direction which is unexpected. So based on everything that I've seen, the thing that you kind of have to keep in mind is you're going to be drawing in an unexpected way. And this drawing of an unexpected way as opposed to a predictable or intuitive way is going to force your brain to create new pathways um, and waken up those neurons because you're learning something new just like if you were learning a new language so you're really stimulating those neurons and you're creating new paths by forcing your brain or forcing yourself to think in a way that it doesn't normally do so you're drawing the unexpected not the expected. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to be drawing what they call neurographic lines. And a neurographic line is a line which goes where you don't expect it to. It does not repeat itself. It is not a straight line and it's not an arch. So it's a free flowing line that goes from one direction into another direction that is not expected by your brain. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to bring you close and we're just going to go through the steps. So we're going to start with the neurographic line and we're going to start just off the page 
and we're going to move this line. We're going to try and allow it to go in a direction which is unexpected. I'm using a permanent marker so that it doesn't um, stain your hand. And you're going to go to any point on the border and you're gonna start drawing a line and you're just going to allow it to flow. So I intuitively, I wanna draw a line this way. So you want to draw it in any other direction other than the one that you are intuitively drawn to. So if I'm intuitively drawn to draw my line that way, I'm gonna draw my line this way. And then if I want to intuitively go that way, I'm gonna come this way and so on. And you've gotta really think about it And so I want to go this way, so I'm coming this way. I want to go that way, so I come this way. I want to go this way, so I'm coming back. And I'm going all the way along. I want to go this way until you draw the line off there. So it's actually very challenging to do this. And this is the part that's forcing your brain to draw a line that is unexpected as opposed to one that is expected. And you want to do it slowly because it takes time to counteract what you intuitively want to do. So now, I want now the only rules for neurographic lines are they are never to be straight. They are never to repeat. and they are not to be curved. So that is the neurographic line. Direction. I'm going to try and go in any direction other than the one that I intuitively want to go to. So I intuitively want to wrap it this way. So I'm going to come this way. And you just make those decisions and just go in the direction that you are not expecting. And that's my next neurographic line. Now, this is very challenging. As you can see, my lines are all jiggity jaggery because I'm really making an effort to go in any other direction other than the one that I intuitively want to go to. So a really good tip in order to get a hang of and an understanding of what you're trying to do is simply is simply to use a coin. And there, this is just a nickel, there's different weights of coins, but it gives you a really good understanding of the concept behind this. So what you want to do is you're gonna put your pen and you're gonna push the coin, but as you push the coin, the coin is going to go where it wants to go and not necessarily where you want it to go. So this is a really good way of using this exercise. So push the coin and you will find that you cannot control where the coin goes. So let's try that again. And this actually it gives you a good understanding of the exercise yes. without the coin. So again, you push the coin and I'm just pushing and the coin is taking me in a direction that is unexpected. And that is the exercise. So then you can do this from all different directions. I'll start from here. And I'll draw more, whoops, that was unexpected. So again, pushing the coin. There you go. I also found that different weighted coins give you a different effect. The heavier the coin, it seems like more direction you can give. The lighter the coin, like a dime, that is much easier to move around because it's lighter. 
So you can experiment with that. And then what you end up getting is something like this, a whole bunch of squiggly lines. Now the next part, and you can really feel your brain working when you're doing this exercise, it's great. So you draw the lines throughout your, um, on your paper and make sure all the lines are running off the page. And then the next thing that you're going to do is everywhere a line crosses, so everywhere there is an intersection, like this, you're going to round off all of those sharp corners so that now your intersection, all the lines flow and they are all rounded off. So you're rounding off these lines, which are going to be much easier on the eye visually and it gives you a feeling of a flow so you remove all those sharp edges wherever the lines intersect you just round them off now, depending on how many lines that you've made, this may take you a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days. Now, doing this exercise definitely takes up all of your concentration. So if you are the type of person that you have busy thoughts, the fact that you are focusing on this can alleviate um, or separate you from those thoughts because you're just concentrating on your art form. It can give you a break from those daily busy thoughts because it's hard to think about this and think about that at the same time. So as you're rounding these off, these are beginning to look like what the brain's neural connections look like. And it is said that in doing this exercise, that you are stimulating those neurons and you are potentially creating those new pathways. So this is very relaxing, as you can imagine. And it's very gratifying to create these soft and flowing lines. So these are the neurographic lines. And we are all done. This is one that I did before. So the next part is really the fun part and that is just coloring in these areas however you want, whatever is pleasing to the eye. And I'm using, and you can use anything, but I am using um, some oil pastels And I have this little brush that is rounded and it's perfect for this. And then I'm just taking some rubbing alcohol, just lightly dipping the brush. And you can see how it just turns that pastel into a watercolor. The great thing about this, or just my impression, and you don't need a lot of alcohol, you just need to wet the tip, but um, this is so nice and relaxing to use this because, like I said, it's like a watercolor, but the pastels are soft 
and velvety. And they're very concentrated in color. And it's just, it's just really nice using it. Now, I also heard that you should not leave any one color as an island. So meaning only having the green there and not having it anywhere else that's connected. They encourage you to flow the color from one cell to another. And that's basically all the rules. But like I said, this is the artistic and fun part of it. So you can see, and you can see how the round brush just kind of uh, is very, very easy to just have it flow around all of those curved lines. And I can definitely see how this reduces stress or anxiety because when you're thinking and concentrating on your art piece, there's no room to think about the things that perhaps are of concern that may create anxiety. This can help you relax. It can reduce stress. And if it reduces stress, it makes you more relaxed. That means it will release maybe some of the tension in your muscles. And if you relieve the tension in your muscles and your body is relaxed, then perhaps it may relieve any pain that you may have that is a result of the tension. So, so it's relaxing, but it's also exciting because I have no idea what this artwork is going to end up looking like. So then I colored it all in and this was my first attempt at just blocking all the colors in. But then I added one other element, which I'd seen, and that was I added some circles. Coloring it in. Here's my circle. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Where my circle crosses my line and I've got this intersection, I'm going to round off all the corners. So you want everything rounded. You don't want any sharp edges. So here's another intersection. And there's no rules to rounding it off. You can round it off as much or as little as you like. You can use different thicknesses of marker and that will give you a different look as well. But you can see how in rounding off all the sharp corners, you're creating these very organic looking cells. So you can see how you can create this additional shape. Paper towel handy, just to remove some of the previous color. Or maybe you want to mix the two and create a totally customized color. These pastels are just so velvety to use. It's really nice. So then you're going to continue and fill with whatever colors that you like. And then you're going to end up with something like this. And to this, I've added 
um, both a shadow and a highlight. And this just kind of makes all these cells pop a bit, if you can see. So in this case, all I did was I just took um, a darker color. You can use black, you could use brown or gray. And let's say for instance, um, here's a very flat section. If I wanted to create more of a 3D effect, then all I did was just take my line and I just went halfway around. And then with my paintbrush, I just pushed it into the marker line. I'm going to be as heavy or as light as you like it. But you can see that I've just pushed that line into the marker line. So it's creating a shadow. And then I just took white, added it to the middle. I just patted it on. So it creates a highlight in the middle. And your shadow on the side creates this 3D effect. Let me do the orange, then just feathered out that line just by adding just a touch of alcohol. So then I'm just going to create my highlight. And then I try and brush. So you don't have to always use large circles. You can use small circles like this quarter. So my pastels are dry and I'm just gonna add another circle. Created another shape and I'm just going to thicken it up a bit. And I'm going to round off all those sharp angles. So everywhere it intersects, I'm going to round it off. And boy, oh boy, do these little techniques on something that's so simple really start creating something very special and really very beautiful. And here I'm just gonna add a highlight because the areas are so small. And once it's dry, you can accentuate the neural lines. So you can see how you can take something as simple as just a few lines, add some shapes, add some color, some dimension by adding shadows. And the sky is the limit. So you can see how much fun your graphic art really is and anyone can do it. All you need is some paper, a marker, and some coloring medium. It really is fun and challenging to do. And you end up with a unique, one of a kind, beautiful neurographic piece of art. So you can't go wrong. So I hope that you do try this. And if you try it and you like it, I hope you share it. If you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until next time, this is a great way to keep the old noodle working. So happy drawing. Enjoy. Enjoy.